Hey everybody, just wanted to do a quick update of my crab tank here. Some of the crabs have been out and a little more active today. I'm trying to get them a little more used to me being in front of them and sitting here talking. So, just going to shoot a little bit of video. I had two more crabs in here this morning that were dead when I turned the light on. So I've now, again, I've lost track. I keep adding some and then a few die and I add a few more. And I'm not really sure what's going on, why they're dying. I have not seen anywhere near enough aggression to think that they're dying. I did have someone suggest that it was the temperature in the tank was too low since this is an unheated tank and they are tropical crabs. But from everything I can read, most um, information calls for uh, 72 to 75 being the low end of their temperature range. And of course, you can easily go a couple degrees below that. And when I come down here in the morning, uh, the tank does cool down overnight, but it only cools down to about 70 degrees. It was 70.1 this morning when I turned the light on, and right now I would guess it's uh, mid-afternoon, so it's probably up to about 72 or 73 degrees. Uh, the light in there is pretty intense, and it does warm the tank up during the day. Um, so this tank does go through a slight temperature shift between day and night, but I can't imagine a crab being so delicate that a three or four degree temperature shift over a 12 hour period kills it um that's kind of silly to think that so i don't know what else would be doing it it's certainly not a small temperature shift and i don't believe that the 70 degree temperatures are too low uh, as has been suggested i don't think 70 degrees is cold enough to simply kill a crab overnight if it was long term and maybe they were 65 to 70 degrees all the time it might do something to their metabolism or their immune system might be suppressed uh, something like that but i'm not going to get a sudden overnight death by a simple um, low temperature of 70 degrees. Uh, I could simply be that I'm getting them from the big chain pet store and they are just, you know, they die fairly readily and easily. I'm not really sure what's going on. They do have a two week guarantee, so any that die I can take back and get my money back for. So what I will probably do is continue adding a few. If a couple die, I'll add a few more until I get a population in there that is visible and active. And I'm getting really close. When I come in here now, uh, sometimes my movement into the room will cause everybody to sort of scatter. I've been sitting back hoping that somebody would move a little bit. We've got this one right up front here that kind of lives underneath this rock. So we see that one there a lot. And then we've also got one that lives over in this sort of darkened corner. We can see a couple of those uh, ghost shrimp over there. I've still got four of them alive and well in this tank. Uh, there's two of them right there. The other thing I'm working on in this tank is I'm trying to get the Creeping Jenny to grow out and across the water a little bit. You can see a few of these uh, strands in there are extended outward a little bit. This one that's down in the water was actually moving around as we began this video. I don't know if it came out on video. That was the main reason I didn't want to get in there and make too much activity. There was a crab in there that was actually up in these rocks and chewing on it or doing whatever they do, snipping at it and tearing pieces of it off and eating it. They do really uh, like eating that Creeping Jenny. So that one's going to be down in the water and I guess we can uh, start working on pushing some of the rest of those down too since the crabs have already been scared away. So this is all I do to get them to settle down and that really is just sort of pushing it over. Uh, if this was growing in my garden, you can sort of walk on this stuff as long as you're gentle about it, and it'll just spring back up. It's some pretty tough, durable stuff. So me simply mushing it down like this is not going to hurt it at all. So what we'll get is a little more of that effect, and then hopefully as it'll grow outward and then curve back up, I can push it down again and again and again and eventually we'll work it over so we've actually got it growing across the surface of the water and we'll get little yellow flowers on it eventually hopefully I don't know if I can actually get it to flower 
uh, in this environment, but we should be able to. I don't see why I wouldn't be able to. And it'll get covered in pretty little yellow flowers, and that'll be uh, pretty neat looking. So once again, just a quick update. That's all I've really got going on. I did add these two new uh, groupings of reddish plants, or green, red, and white plants. There's one right there dead center of your screen. And then there's another grouping that's kind of still turned around. The leaves haven't really sorted themselves out, but it's tucked under the moss up there at the top. So we'll have to wait and see how those do. I really hope they do well because it's a really, really pretty plant. And then my moss that I've planted all on top of the uh, filter there looks pretty good too. The moisture that's being um, exposed to down here on the bottom, both in that dark corner and over here where the waterfall is, is allowing the moisture to, to sort of move up through the um, moss by the wick effect or capillary action and it's got that whole section nice and moist and then with this vigorous light in here we're doing really well as far as growth so I'm really happy with the way it's turning out so far for brackish water I was really uh, dubious as to whether or not these plants were going to do well in here or not because the only plants in there that I know do well in brackish water is the Java, the Anubius, and the Creeping Jenny. All those mosses in there and all those plants in the back are all just an experiment. So make sure you're subscribed that way you won't miss how the experiment turns out. Uh, as I've said before, this tank will get changed up over time. We're just getting into the warmer weather, so we got lots of good stuff ahead. And if you're subscribed, you won't miss any of that. So thanks for watching this one. This is my Red Claw to Crab Tank. Hope you enjoyed it. I look forward to seeing you real soon in the next one.